Welcome back to Persona 3 FES. Last time, Gary Stu has only been in this world for one day, and already everyone thinks he's dating the most popular girl in school. Truly, the power of the Stu is immense, and, uh, yes. There is very little that can stop him at this point. Anyway, now, from this save point, we actually do have the option to go straight back to our room, which can be a very useful thing, but for now, I'm actually going to go and explore the dorm a little bit. Uh, down here we have... Men's restroom. We can use this just like the one at school. There is a purpose to this, but I'll explain that later. And we have no option to do anything with the women's restroom, obviously. Now, up the stairs here... We have this little sitting area. Now, sometimes your party members will hang out here, so if you can't find someone downstairs, then you might want to check here. But what I really wanted to show was the vending machine. The vending machine in the dorm has some drinks here. They have a Cielo Mist, which I believe is a reference to Digital Devil Saga, another um, Atlas game. Sobe and Mad Bull. Mad Bull is the one that you want to remember. Now, at this point, money is kind of tight, so if you don't buy this right now, it's fine. But you will need a Mad Bull eventually, so remember that you can buy them here. Just pointing that out. Now, on the, at the end of the second floor hallway, this is Gary Stu's room. This room seems to be empty, we can go inside. Now, really, all the empty rooms in this place all pretty much look the same. So I just wanted to show one of the vacant rooms, and that's it. Once you've seen one of them, you've basically seen them all. But these, also the uh, point of view changes a little bit after you go out of a room. But these vacant rooms, they might end up getting filled a little bit later in the game. Also, you can rotate the camera by using the right analog stick, or do it Spyro style with the L1 and R1 buttons. Now, again, there's not really that much else to show here, uh, more vending machines and stuff, and there really isn't all that much um, to do with these rooms. In fact, let me just check if we can see any empty room. Empty. Yukari. Hmm, so she lives in the room right above us. And Mitsuru's room. This must be the girl section. Of course she's not in her room because she's downstairs. Here we have the fourth floor hallway. And we've got some restrooms here and a set of big doors here. Hmm, just what is through those doors? I wonder. And here's the fifth floor. Up here, we have a notice on the door. Do not open. If open, close it. But we can't do anything with that door at the moment. We found another occupied room. The nameplate on this door says Akihiko. That's someone we haven't heard of before. There's someone inside. Uh, what happens if we knock? Well, whoever it is, he seems to know Mitsuru. Now, just before we go back to our room, there's one more thing that I want to show about the dorm. Back in the lounge, just behind the dining room, there's this door right here. The back door's locked. Hmm, I wonder if that will be important later. Now we can head back to our room. Yep, we're getting tired. Gary Stu should get some rest. After a long, hard day of spreading rumors about him dating Yukari. I'm going out for a bit. Hmm? Didn't you see the newspaper? There's a lot going on. Well, the news just talked about cherry blossoms. I know. 
People who had no problems before are suddenly developing acute cases of apathy syndrome. That word is highlighted in green, it must be important. I've seen it in the news quite often lately. Again, the news seems mostly obsessed with cherry blossoms at the moment. They say it's due to stress, but... Yeah, right. It has to be them. Otherwise, it's not worth my time. You have a one-track mind. Will you be okay on your own? The chairman will be here for the next few days, but after that, I can... Don't worry. I'm just getting a little practice. This isn't a game, Akihiko. So that's Akihiko. And well, looks like we were right about him knowing Mitsuru. Those two seem to be well acquainted with each other. And prepare to see the date chain screen an awful lot. Early morning on Wednesday. But that next count has gone up to one. Gary Stu's like, is it the rumor that I'm dead in Yukari? Yes, my rumor spreading talents worked. Oh. Oh, actually, maybe it is the story about Gary Stu. She? Nah, it's someone else. Lest Gary Stu spread rumors about having another girlfriend. Well, that's not creepy at all. Maybe that's the mysterious apathy syndrome they were talking about. Whatever it is, cases of it have been increasing lately. Well, we're finally having an actual class here, and for non-plot events, most characters are not voice acted. So, let's take a look at the novel by Zenzor Kasai. <laughs> you know, I really wish my English teachers when I was in high school were like, you know what, screw Shinesky, let's do an actually good author. Anyone who didn't go to school in Australia is not going to get that at all. So this is obviously Japanese literature class. <laughs> Once again, I really wish my high school English teachers had just brought their own stuff rather than taught the stuff they were forced to do on the syllabus. Ah! We should have been paying attention there. Now, Zenzor Kasai was the one that she mentioned that was on the syllabus that she didn't like. This name sounds nothing like either of the names she mentioned, so by process of elimination, it must be Utsubo Kut uh, Kubota. Yes, that's right, so we were listening. So here's something that might come off as very, very, very weird to Westerners. In Japan, being considered a good student and someone who pays attention in class makes you more popular. Westerners are probably more used to the opposite happening. But, yes, answering that question uh, correctly and helping out Junpei there gives you a boost to your charm. Charm is one of your three social stats, which are separate from, well, I other stats that will become important later. Now the hardest part of a max social link run early on is we need to get these social stats maxed out as soon as possible. But charm isn't as important now. The main one is courage. We're gonna have to do some serious hoop jumping and hey look there's Junpei and that other guy with a portrait. And look uh, there's a... there's a um... Well, I didn't really want to say fat, but yeah, fat student on the couch there. An elderly couple at the bookstore. Wonder if they're going to be important. Well, there's a new face. What if this is the chairman they were talking about? Oh, he's back. So, this is our new guest. And this guy's name is apparently Sophisticated Gentleman. 
Good evening. My name is Shuji Ikutsuki. I'm the chairman of the board for your school. Huh, by chairman, they meant chairman of the school board. That's definitely someone pretty important. Ikutsuki. <laughs> Hard to say, isn't it? That's why I don't like introducing myself. Even I get tongue-tied sometimes. Well, looks like the um, director of the school board's kind of a bit eccentric. Please, have a seat. Like most people around here. I apologize about the confusion regarding your accommodations. <laughs> Gary still at this point is like, no, no, don't apologize. I get to be with all these girls. However, it may take a while longer before you receive the proper room assignment. Gary Sue's like, that means I get to be with these girls even longer. Is there anything you'd like to ask? <laughs> at this point, Gary Sue wants to ask, how long does it take to raise an S support in this universe? So, we've got quite a few questions. Firstly, why is he here today? To welcome you, of course. Well, that was a simple answer. Well, to be honest, I do have other business here. Hmm. Speaking of which, where's Mitsuru, Yukari? Mitsuru seems to be pretty important around here. She's upstairs. As diligent as always. Although it doesn't hurt to come down and say hello. Is there anything else? Uh, who else lives here? There were only four students in this dorm. You, Yukari here, Mitsuru. And I believe we've already met the, uh, well, Gary Suze hasn't met him yet, but we, the players, through the magic of seeing cutscenes the main character isn't privy to, have met him. And a senior named Akihiko Sanada. So he's also a senior, just like Mitsuru. Makes sense those two would know each other then. I hope you all get along. Any other questions? Well, we could tell him about this, but Yukari said to not talk about that. So, let's say we're good for now. Then, I hope you have a successful school year. Now, if you'll excuse me. You must be tired from all the excitement. You should go to bed early. Everyone wants us to go to bed early these As days. They say, the early bird catches the bookworm. <laughs> Gary. Please forgive the pun. <laughs> oh no. He likes making puns. This is gonna be a disaster. You'll get used to his lame jokes. Oh no, no, I don't think we ever will. Gary Sue probably appreciate his bookworm joke, thinking as long as that bookworm's female, I wouldn't mind catching them. And so, Gary Sue's asleep. While he's asleep means he must have dreams. Working hard? Dreaming that- wait a minute, this isn't a dream, this is really happening. So... this is interesting. I knew there was something going on at this dorm, but this is really out of the ordinary. So, how's he doing? Huh. When the chairman was talking about Mitsuru being as conscientious as usual, he didn't mean just with schoolwork. He went to bed a little while ago. He's asleep now. And apparently they're monitoring him while he sleeps. Mr. Chairman, do you think he's... Well, let's wait and see for now. Well, he's certainly a very special type of individual who can warp reality to his will. The dark hour is approaching. Well, that's a term we haven't heard before. But it might be something that we've seen before. Meanwhile, in town... Wait, Kirijo Electronics? Isn't that Mitsuru's surname? happening again. Uh, 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 
And Garrus too was perfectly fine with that. He didn't think that was strange at all. Oh, Garrus too. Hmm. He's still sleeping. Garrus too certainly is bizarre. The dark hour occurs every day at 12 midnight. You could say it's the hidden hour. And you could also say that you're giving us some exposition in front of characters who blatantly already know what you're talking about. During this time, an ordinary person transmogrifies into a coffin and is oblivious to all that occurs. Then what happened to that guy who didn't turn into a coffin? And melted. Maybe turning into a coffin is good. Then he must be... But Gary Stu didn't turn into a coffin or melt. As you can see, he's retained his human form. He's asleep, but he's definitely experiencing the dark hour. The only question that remains is whether or not he has the potential. And once again, that word is highlighted in green. It must be important. Although, he must. If he didn't, they would have preyed on him by now. That sounds ominous. Scary. In any case, we should continue to monitor him for a few more days. Yes, sir. I feel kind of bad, though, spying on him like this. Yeah, I mean, I'd normally I'd agree with her, but I mean, this is this is Gary Stu. He is a pretty disturbing presence and probably should be watched. Weird things happen when he's around. Speaking of weird things happening, things are about to get even more surreal. to the velvet room, my dear young man. My name is Igor. I am delighted to make your acquaintance. It's hard to tell, but Igor is voiced by Dan Warren, who you may have heard on this channel as Virion in Fire Emblem Awakening. That's a pretty big vocal range there. This is Elizabeth. She's a resident here, like myself. Pleased to meet you. Speaking of vocal range, Elizabeth's voiced by Tara Platt, who you might remember as um, Muriel in Fire of Awakening and Flavia, who both sounded essentially the same. But Elizabeth sounds very different from any of Tara Platt's other roles. Also, Elizabeth is amazing and another one of my favourite RPG characters of all time. This place exists between dream and reality, mind and matter. It's been years since we've had a guest. Oh, right. Only those who have signed the contract can enter this place. So, Mysterious Creepy Boy works for you. Henceforth, you shall be welcome here in the Velvet Room. Welcoming Gary Stu somewhere does not bode well. You are destined to hone your unique ability, and you will require my help to do so. I only ask one thing in return. That you abide by the contract, and assume responsibility for the choices you make. <laughs> I understand. I don't understand. Or we can take the third option. Precisely. You are fast asleep in the real world as we speak. Well, that's a surprisingly logical explanation. This visit of yours is merely a dream. So we're just dreaming. However, you will come here of your own accord sooner or later. But this place can be visited in reality as well. Hold on to this. Well, we can now come back here whenever we want. Till we meet again. And trust me, we will be coming back here a lot. This place is somewhere we're going to be seeing a lot of. It's essentially the bridge between the social sim and RPG aspects of this game. Strange dream about a strange old man with a huge nose. 
And his sidekick, who is absolutely amazing, but we haven't really realized that yet. However, it's time to go to school. Just don't think too much about the weird old man who seems to have a mysterious creepy boy working for him, who made you sign a contract and accept responsibility for your actions, and he said that you'd visit a place that exists in dreams and in reality, but also simultaneously doesn't exist in both those places. Yeah, let's just go to school. That's pretty much the main theme of this series, really. Normal school life juxtaposed with very, very weird things. <laughs> he's being oddly philosophical at this point. Uh, yeah, he's definitely full of energy. Of course, when, when he said, what more do you, could you ask for, Gary Stu's first thought would probably be waifus. Huh. Hmm. There's something that he's not supposed to talk about. Looks like things are reversed now. We've been keeping secrets, now he's the one keeping secrets. It's just another school day. And we're with Mr. Okoda this time, teaching classic literature. Uh, I'd, I'd agree with that. I, I do like classic literature myself. Of course, this guy is uh, very, very proud of his own um, his own subject. Okay, so here is the first instance that we have to choose whether or not to doze off in class. Never doze off in class. Always choose to stay awake. Really? Wow. Uh, it's all. Don't you always hate it when teachers just try and use hip slang and. Yeah. But Gary Stu's not zoning out, and because of that, he gets a boost to his academic stats. This is important. Now, academics is by far the least important of the three stats at the moment, because it doesn't become relevant until much later in the game. But for now, we still want to take every boost to these stats that we can, and because of that, never s fall asleep in class. Trust me, it, it really helps. Hey look, it's that girl who got lost before. Oh, she's talking to a cat, that's nice. Someone looks like they're buying flowers. And, wait a minute. There was a short-looking boy that people have already played this game might recognize. But every night at midnight, the dark hour falls. Gary Stu is still asleep this time. But he's most likely still being monitored. How is he? The same as last night. Hmm, very interesting. Even those who have the potential tend to be unstable at first. And by unstable, does he mean see weird dreams about old men with giant noses? Memory loss? Disorientation? Oh, Gary Sue's already had the memory loss part. Yeah, um, we've been there, done that, basically. But this subject is rather unique. He hasn't exhibited any of the common symptoms. Because he already went through them in Fire Emblem Awakening. But we're treating him like a guinea pig. I like how she's one of the uh, the few who actually voices concerns here. See, Yukari is nice. I understand your concern, but it's imperative that we recruit new members. Huh. It's kind of like an inverted Fire Emblem situation. We're the one being recruited by them. I heard he's your classmate. <laughs> oh no, he's heard that they're dating as well, hasn't he? Wouldn't you be more comfortable working with someone from the same grade? Well, she wouldn't be comfortable working with someone who spreads rumors that they're dating to the whole school. Yeah, I guess. But still. Come to think of it though, she really doesn't have anyone of the same grade as her in this group. Command room. 
Is that you, Akihiko? You're not gonna believe this. This thing is huge. Well, that's not good. Unfortunately, I don't have time to talk. It's chasing me. Now, you'd better not be heading here. I wanted to let you guys know. I'm almost there. You derp. You've led it right to us, haven't you? Does that mean he's bringing that thing here? Mr. Chairman, let's suspend our observation for now. We'll prepare for battle. Looks like we're going to have our introduction to the combat aspect of this game coming up right now. Alright, be careful. Senpai. Well, if it took down one of our tougher members, then this thing is... This thing must be pretty strong. Are uh, you sure it's it's fine for a combat tutorial? I'm alright. You don't look alright. Get ready to be surprised. It'll be here any second. Well, that's that's not good. This is no time to joke around. Exactly. It's one of them, Akihiko? And I was about to say, speaking of that, please don't make any puns. One of them, huh? The same things that are causing apathy syndrome, maybe? They're also referred to as them. Yes, but not an ordinary one. Huh, looks like we've got a boss class enemy on our hands here. Once again, are you sure this is alright for a tutorial? Uh, what the? You've got to be kidding me! Also, take a moment to take this music in, because this is the only point in the entire game that you'll ever hear this song. Which feels kind of strange. Mr. Chairman, please head for the command room. Mitsuru being awesome. Takiba, go upstairs and wake him up. Then escape out the back. What about you two? They're the veterans. They'll probably be able to handle this. We'll stop it here. Once again, Mitsuru being awesome. You let it to us, Akihiko, so I'm afraid you'll have to fight. Like I had a choice. <laughs> what are you waiting for, Yukari? Go! Ha I'm going! You just have to trust them. Hope they've got this. Something tells me they do this all the time, though. They should be fine. Hopefully. Meanwhile, Gary Stu is awoken by a loud noise. Wake up! Sorry, I'm coming in. I don't have time to explain. We have to get out of here now! And Gary Sue's like, normally I'd be completely fine with a pretty lady burning into my room like this, but this doesn't seem like the time. I think it's pretty obvious we've got an emergency on our hands. Let's go. Hurry, downstairs. We'll leave through the back door. That thing's so powerful it can vibrate my controller. Yukari handed you a short sword? Where was she keeping that? How did she have a sword in the first place? And... You know what? When you get explicitly given a weapon in an RPG, in a situation where you're supposed to be escaping, it's pretty obvious your escape attempt's not going to be successful. Okay, let's go. But at least we know we can defend ourselves if need be. Then again, Yukari has that gun for self-defense that's apparently not a real gun. Wonder what the significance of that is. All right, we should be safe now. And I told you this door would be important. Takiba, do you read me? <laughs> yes, I hear you. Be careful. There's more than one enemy. Oh no. The one we're fighting isn't the one 
Wait a minute, the one Akihiko saw, he said that was huge, so the veterans are not fighting the huge thing. That, that, that does not bode well for us. That really doesn't bode well. What? Uh, let's pull back. Well, looks like that door isn't important after all. Currently being occupied by the huge thing that Akihiko saw. And suddenly the voice acting has stopped, and my control was vibrating like crazy. Oh no, no, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it! Ah, <sighs> first rule of escaping, never escape upstairs! Well, we've got control now. Hey, let's go to the vending machine and buy a drink! <laughs> yeah, no, nah, let's not be that much of a jerk. It's funny that you at least get the option, though. Okay, there's no one else in this dorm that we could wake up to help us, so we don't have much of a choice. The monster's got all the eggs it's covered downstairs, so... There really is nowhere to go but up. What was that? that was an enormous damage bill. I will say here that I find it a bit weird they disabled the voice acting for just two very brief scenes, and now it's suddenly back again. Could have at least recorded two more voice lines for Yukari. Again, escaping upstairs, not a good idea. And, and the voice acting's uh, gone again. Strange. Uh, our only option is the door that says do not open, if open, close it. Which apparently just leads out to the roof. <sighs> now, we'd better have a paraglider somewhere, otherwise escaping to the roof really wasn't a good idea. I think we're okay for now. Yeah, um, yeah, the giant monster's coming up the stairs, we're on the roof with no hope of escape, yeah, we're totally gonna be okay. Uh-oh. It's right behind us, isn't it? What? Those monsters. We call them shadows. That thing's for self-defense. Wait. And it's not a real gun. And she was trying to fire it at herself before. I think we see what this is. But... Just what exactly is this thing?
Okay, I'm pretty sure that wasn't supposed to happen. But well, this ought to even the odds. Nice shot, whoever you are! Thing didn't even stand a chance. Uh, I, you, you can stop now, I think it's dead. I, I think it's dead! And... it's gone. Back to being just a normal personification of his psyche based off of mythology that is capable of destroying those dark beasts. Yeah, totally back to normal. What on earth is that? Even they're surprised by that. I think Garyasu doesn't just have the potential, he has it much stronger than even they predicted. Orpheus regained its original form, but uh, even then... Orpheus is something from Greek mythology. What's it doing in modern day Japan? And it seems to have come out of Garyasu's head when he activated that device. Garrisu has obtained a new persona. Is it over? Seems like it. Or not. Huh. Miniature versions of that thing, huh? And get ready for the most bizarre yet incredibly catchy RPG battle theme of all time. So, right now we're basically thrust into a battle. There's not really all mu that much we can do now except wait, attack these enemies, which are called Cowardly Maya, or use an assigned ability we have on our Persona. Now, of course, Personas are a lot cooler than regular attacks, so let's go ahead and see what this is. We have Bash, and now this should be a bit of a surprise to people who n normally play RPGs. This attack costs 5 of our HP. So, you actually pay HP as a cost for some attacks. So, let's see how well this does. We need to use this um, disturbingly gun-shaped summoning device to use Orpheus, but he certainly seems to do quite a lot of damage. For comparison, let's see how a regular uh, slash with our sword does against these things. Yeah, not nearly as much as Orpheus did. Clearly, Personas are the key to fighting these enemies. Which means we're going to have to using these devices a lot more. That was simple, and we're getting experience from that too. And Gary Stu felt a surge of energy inside. None of those three stats up the top are going to increase, those are purely social stats. But our HP and spirit points have gone up. But what about other stats? We're also able to create personas up to level 2, so apparently Gary Stu has the power to create personas? But, something inside Gary Stu's changed. Orpheus has leveled up too. Endurance increased by 1, and luck increased by 2. Yes, apart from HP and SP, all of your stats are tied to your persona in this game. So basically, think of this as a game where the summons from other RPGs are the entire core of the gameplay. Not only that, but Orpheus has learned a new ability, Argy, a basic fire element skill. You might notice up the top that under those elements, it says Orpheus has weaknesses to two of them. You'll want to remember that for later. For now, though, seems like those dark monsters are gone. But, you know what, I think anyone would faint after something like that. 
Especially after having to do something as draining as mock shooting yourself in the head. Say something. Are you all right? Can you hear me? Please answer me. One down. Eleven to go.